Is Electro practical? Let's hope that's not like asking if lightning strikes twice. Electro is among the most famous villains in comic book history. Only recently has he gotten the big screen treatment, but we'll get to that debacle soon enough. For this episode, we're going to focus mainly on comic book Electro. Now, the original suggestion asked to explain Electro's powers, but therein lies a bit of an issue. I honestly cannot find an explanation for his powers. For those who might not know the comic book origin, Electro was a guy working on a power line when he was struck by lightning giving him electrokinesis, and allowing his body to generate mass amounts of electricity without killing him. This, as far as we all know right now, is likely not possible. Whatever would make it possible is simply unknown to all extents. If the lightning strikes him next to a power line, it would probably kill him. If he was struck by the lightning and lived, it probably wouldn't give him electrical powers. And if it did give him powers, those powers would kill him because the electric current running through his body would basically burn him from the inside, possibly stopping his heart instantly. So unfortunately, how Electro gained his powers and how his powers don't kill him is basically out of the question. Or is it? While we can't explain how Electro got his powers, we can put together how he keeps them under control. See, in the suggestion for this episode, a pretty important word was brought up. That word is capacitor. That's going to be a key element in determining how Electro uses his powers. There's one other key element as well. Two words. His suit. Electro's suit would have to serve as a way of keeping the charging and discharging of his electricity under control. To understand how this works, we'd first have to know what an electrical capacitor, as mentioned before, is. An electrical capacitor is a device that controls the charging and discharging of electrical energy. There are many forms that capacitors come in, but they basically all follow a simple blueprint. Electrical capacitors have two components, an insulator and two conductors. The conductor will let the electricity flow through the capacitor, while the insulator prevents the flow. Think of the capacitor like a waterfall, composed of the river above and the river below. The conductors are the free air through which the water falls down to the river below, and the insulator is like a dam that keeps the water from reaching that river. When conductors allow the electricity to flow, it is called a discharge. Discharges, in this case, are bursts of electrical energy in any size. So a small discharge could just send a small little shockwave through the capacitor, while a bigger discharge might cause the electricity to partially leave the capacitor and travel to other conductors in the environment. When the conductors are not playing their part and the insulator is keeping the electricity pent up, it is called charging. Charging is the process of the capacitor keeping the electricity in rather than letting it out. This allows the electricity to build up power over time, hence the term charge. Taking a step back into the world of comics, Electro's suit would likely work in a similar fashion. It would have to serve as some kind of capacitor to keep his powers in check. Without it, he'd probably be long dead, even with the fictional laws applying to his abilities. So this begs the question, have we ever seen a practical suit on Electro? Actually, we have, but we haven't gotten the suit perfect yet. Before we get to what the perfect suit would be, let's try and see if we can't find one that matches up pretty well. Here's the original suit from the comics. What it's made out of is anyone's guess, but it's a skin-tight, flexible material, so I think it's safe to say that it's either spandex or rubber. Some variations of the suit also have a metal belt, so we'll also chalk that up. We're not even going to consider the suit from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 because, well, literal teleportation. So that leaves us with one other variation of the suit, the suit from The Spectacular Spider-Man, which happens to be my favorite incarnation of the Spider-Man franchise. 
This suit looks about the same as the one in the comics, with a little more of a mechanical feel to it. The substance used to make the suit is also unknown, but it might be rubber, because it was originally used to keep Electro from using his powers. Rubber is a strong insulator of electricity, so it's safe to assume that at least some of the suit is made from it. However, that's not the most important detail. This is. That, right there, is an electrical current from Electro's body being channeled through some kind of tube. I don't know how they got electricity to go through a tube, but more on this in a bit. We have two candidates for the most practical suit, the original suit and the spectacular suit. What pros and cons do these suits both have? Let's start off with the comic suit. The pros of this suit are the materials it's made from. Like I said before, this suit is either rubber or spandex, and it would make sense for it to be rubber because of the headpiece. Spandex isn't so easily shaped like that, but rubber can be. So we'll call the suit rubber, making one of its pros that it's a great insulator. Another pro of the suit is the belt. While only a few variations have included this belt, it's a key component to the suit. The belt, depending on what it's made of, could be a great conductor for Electro's powers. However, there are a few issues here. Let's jump back to capacitors. Most conductors are what we call plates because, well, that's what they are. Metal plates or metal slabs. Now, the cool thing about conductors is that the closer they are, the more powerful the eventual electric discharge they produce will be. If Electro's belt contained plates or is made out of metal itself, it would be great for discharging. However, Electro is often seen shooting lightning from his hands and never his belt. Whatever the belt does, it's probably not helping. If the belt isn't discharging, then the suit itself can't discharge, it can only charge. So we can rule out the comic suit. So what, does that mean the spectacular suit is the most practical? Well, while I see the spectacular suit as being closer to what the real suit would have to be, it suffers from the same issues. There are no plates visible anywhere on the suit, no metal for that matter. And as we can see here, Electro discharges not from plates, but from what seems to be all of his exposed body. Again, Electro being a work of fiction, this is to be expected, but it also rules out the spectacular suit for a lack of ability to discharge. So what would the ideal Electro suit look like? Something like this. Again, spectacular got the closest. As we can see here, Electro would have to have the rubber suit used for insulation. This would allow Electro to store up an electrical charge to later be discharged. Now, the discharge, if we're going by how Electro does it in the comics, would likely come from his hands, so he'd have to have his conductors attached to his gloves. The way I picture it here is just one of many ways this could work, keep in mind. If it did work this way, the plates on his digits and palms would all be close to each other, allowing for a more powerful discharge. And, just as something to help us understand this better, I imagine he'd keep the tubes. My reasoning for this is that, thinking back on it, those could be rubber tubes, and if they are, it'd explain how a current of electricity travels so cleanly through them. It's likely these tubes would be used to evenly distribute the current to both conductor areas on Electro's body, so that one side of the discharge isn't weaker or stronger than the other. So that's how Electro's suit would have to work, more or less. We've seen a lot of variations of the suit, and while some have come closer than others, none have quite hit the nail on the head. Really? Electro's suit actually isn't that far-fetched. I gotta say, I'd be shocked if this suit never came to fruition in the real world. Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed this episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as for what superhero or supervillain you guys want to see next. This episode was suggested by Green Jiggles. You guys can go check out his channel. I'll link it in the description below. Or actually, uh, maybe I'll start adding annotations or something like that. I might actually just do that. So, likely as I'm speaking right now, there's an annotation on screen. You guys can go check out his channel. It was a pretty good suggestion. Uh, before the episode ends, I do want to say that I was originally going to do a Q&A for 200 subscribers. I'm not going to do that anymore. And the reason being is because... 200 was originally like really special to me because I used to be a pretty dead end channel and so 200 was like really special but we're growing fairly fast now we're still pretty small in numbers but we're climbing up the ladder fairly quickly compared to what I used to do so I'll probably do a Q&A for a bigger number depending on what that number ends up being but yeah guys the episode's over now so have a great night